All right, Colin. No, nope, no pressure. But this is the first stream right here. Yeah, great. Okay, so we're gonna talk about who we are first, and then kind of walk people through what what it is we're doing, what our goals are, why why people might be interested, and in, in all of that. So, um, let's start with who we are, and I suppose I can I can dive right in. So. <clears throat> We have we have some photos and things um, that kind of represent some of the stuff we're gonna gonna talk about here. But, All right, so I, I'm um, gonna pull up a photo of the children's fiddling method. And you yeah, want, okay. Why don't you tell me who that is? Right there. So that is me at age five, and I started on violin when I was three years old, and. Um, it is probably relevant that Mel Bay was my grandfather, and so I grew up in you know music education and so on, and obviously was dragged kicking and screaming to photo shoots to be on covers of books and things. But Here, um, I've got a picture of you playing music with your father and your grandfather. Yeah, and so early on, violin was my first instrument, but then I learned six string guitar as well, and so I. Would go to my grandpa's house and you know ha have lessons on Sundays and things like that and play with him and my dad and um, kind of grew up in that business and it, later on actually worked at Mel Bay too from about 2010 to 2015 but always worked there growing up too. Um, I also for high school went to Interlochen Arts Academy and. Um, I was a guitar major, a jazz guitar major. Um, went to summer camp there prior as well, um, but was serious about music. And from there, ended up in college and conservatory in New York City at New School University. And so similarly, I was a guitar major there, jazz guitar. Um, all along was a writing major as well, which is somewhat irrelevant other than, you know, writing and music were good things to know given that I, you know, was involved with Mel Bay at the time too. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's generally my early background with music and, uh, worked as a professional musician, gigged, recorded all sorts of styles. Like after um, you got out of school and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even during school, but you certainly after sure. after that as well uh, in New York City, uh, primarily, um, but elsewhere too. Um, then I, in 2016, moved to Rochester, New York, which is where I still live, and didn't plug into the music scene for quite some time, but um, scratched that itch in my musical brain by learning new instruments, and that was something I had always done too. So. I started on violin, can still, you know, get my way around that a little bit, um, play guitar, but I can play bass. I can, you know, basically any stringed instrument, a few others, you know. Um, I've always kind of just picked up instruments to, to learn, and so that that's how I stayed active, um, at least while I was, you know, early on in, in Rochester, too. So it's a little bit about my background. Um, how about you, Andrew? Well, um, I think like you, I started as a violinist when I was quite young. Um, I can even try to find a picture of me young. Let's see. Yeah, there I am. I'm wearing a, uh, this is like the day I got my violin. I think I'm six years old. Um, <laughs> I'm wearing like a shirt from, I guess that's the Peter Brady collection, which is, <laughs> which is just lovely. So I, so I studied violin um, until I, it was time to go to college. Um, and then I, I wound up at Berkeley College of Music um, where I studied jazz violin, um, kind of headed, he, went the jazz direction. Then I, I um, kind of reversed course and I, and I got a graduate degree uh, from SIU in kind of classical violin performance, I guess you'd say. Um, and life moved on. I kind of became a musician, became a violinist. Um, and uh, started teaching along the way, and that's when you and I first crossed paths. Um, 
um, and I know I just I just asked you this, but that was did you say 90, yeah. 1997? The... 1997, yeah. So yeah. I was I was twelve. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, so I I t even taught you for a little while, um, and um, you know it, I've played with a lot of different groups, a lot of different things. Started recording, and that that kind of drew me into pedal steel and you know so um yeah. you know that's kind of in a nutshell that's where i'm coming from so maybe we can talk about what led us to um to steel guitar then and influences and so on so sounds good um so for me i um one of my older brothers listened to this is in the 90s like bands like Grateful, the Grateful Dead and Fish and so on. And so I heard a lot of that stuff um, <clears throat> growing up. Uh, and even though I wasn't a native in terms of jam band type stuff, um, I remember hearing Working Man's Dead. And I was, again, studying six string guitar. And I didn't know what a steel guitar was. I didn't even know that's what Jerry Garcia was playing. So I was trying to emulate that stuff on six string guitar um, with varying degrees of success. But I, I loved that sound. Um, there was a Fish song called Fast Enough For You that was on their album called Rift. Similarly, that had, um, uh, you know, steel guitar on it. Um, and then jumping forward, in college, I had a classmate named Michaela Neller. And Michaela um, is a singer who s still sings. She's a country singer, uh, goes by Michaela Ann and is based in Nashville. But I was gigging with her on guitar and uh, I had an auto swell volume swell pedal and she liked the sound of that because it reminded her of pedal steel. So I was having these weird experiences, you know, a step or two removed from pedal steel, um, but where the influence as backwards said it, as it is, was, was kind of undeniable. Um, that same brother of mine, Andy, um, started to get more into country um, around 2000. So I'm, I, I'm jumping around again, but there were several albums that he introduced me to that um, ultimately influenced me a lot with regards to leading me to steel guitar, but also just in general, I still like them. One is 12 Golden Country Greats by Ween. Um, that features Russ Hicks, and in a future stream, we'll talk about this guitar because um, there's a story there. But um, but I you know loved that sound. Um, there were other albums too uh, from that era. Um, two Jerry Jeff Walker albums, one called Live from Grooney Hall with Lloyd Maines on steel guitar, and Jerry Jeff Walker had another album I liked called Viva Terlingua. Um, all, all of these, again, were albums my brother had that he suggested I listen to. Um, the Highwaymen, uh, The Road Goes On Forever, same deal. Just, you know, a, not, not like it was a steel front and forward album, but it had steel on it. And I liked that sound. And again, didn't even at the time know really what I was hearing other than just I liked it. Um, so, you know, th there were all of these kind of weird experiences that... Um, you know, led led me to steel. Um, I listened to, I liked, you know, just listening to classic rock, right? People like the Rolling Stones and Neil Young and Bob Dylan and stuff like that. And and there's steel all over um, the, their music from that classic era too. So sure. um, again, there were there were things that were um, uh, that I was like, I liked the sound of, but but just didn't know explicitly what was you know, what was going on. And there were kind of two things that were the final nail in the coffin for me. One was, again, in that 2010 to 2015 range when I was at Mel Bay, um, I was working with DeWitt Scott on what was to be a, a, a new Mel Bay book. Um, it never materialized, um, but that was the first time I really sunk my teeth in a little more deeply, explicitly, with steel guitar. And then also I worked on a book at the time at Mel Bay with a guy named Jay Leach who plays steel guitar. Um, the book was called First Lessons Pedal Steel. Um, and it, it's okay. It's not, it wasn't the you know, coolest book ever. And, but, but you know at the time, Jay was asking me things like, well, this is a First Lessons book. Should I do it on just E9 or E9 and C6? And I just frankly didn't have 
the experience or competence or background or wherewithal to say one way or the other. Yeah, it sounds so, like a but, baptism by fire. You know. <laughs> yeah, right. But it was it was <laughs> it was an interesting role. You have to be decent at everything, and you know, I just hadn't really been exposed to pedal steel um, enough at that point. Right. Um, but the, the biggest thing then was seeing Dale Watson live in St. Louis in that same era. And he had Don Pollock on steel. And that was the first time I saw it up close live. And it just blew my mind. And, and from that point, I knew I wanted to be able to draw on that, that sound in my own music. Now, I didn't want to learn pedal steel to play it at the time. I, you know, but... I wanted to be able to play Telecaster and play with a steel guitarist. And I didn't know any steel guitarists. And so my, my thinking was, I need to get one and I need to learn one so that I can compose for it and arrange for it and then teach someone who's, you know, who knows music, whose musicianship I respect, to do it so that they can do it while I'm playing guitar. And that remains something I you know, want to do, but also in that process i got totally caught up in it and you know love playing steel now I mean, prob at this point probably even more than just regular six string guitar um but that's what led me uh to steel how about you andrew well i i think um growing up i heard a lot of pedal steel a lot of different places be it on tv um or uh you know in, in on pop records on uh, you know, be it country or, um, you know, the, some of the more mainstream hits, like I mentioned, like uh, Blue Bayou, Tiny Dancer, that kind of thing. My ear was always drawn to it. Um, as far as country, at a certain point, I got into um, Hank Williams and was really kind of drawn to that the pedal steel sound in, in that. Um, and, you know, so I, I, I always liked the sound. But then kind of an inflection point for me as I played with a, a guy named Jerry Brightman. I played a long run of a show with him and I would hear him play every night. And that's when I really started to uh, kind of have a soft spot for pedal steel because I saw how it worked. I saw, well, I shouldn't say how it worked. I saw that it was, I saw that it was complicated, <laughs> but I didn't understand what was happening with the knee levers and the, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I think it kind of terrified me in some ways, but it really sounded great. And Jerry, if you don't know who Jerry was, he was a very good, he's, he's passed on now, but he was a very good pedal steel player. He played on Hee Haw and he played with Buck Owens. And, um, you know, it was a, a treat to see him up close. Um, so I moved on from that show. And, um, and then the, I think the next point at which I was really drawn to it is you got a pedal steel. And I, I was actually with you when you got it. And then we played around with your pedal steel and that just really had, um, had a, a, an effect on me. That I, 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 you left my house one day after we had played around with your pedal steel and I was thinking, I'd really like to get one of those. Um, yeah. It didn't happen right away, but it did happen. And um, you know, here I am, made me the man I am today. Now I... Yeah. Now I have a number of pedal steels. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it, so again, it was it. Well, it was the 2014 steel guitar show in St. Louis that I got my steel, which again is a story for another day. But um, I did buy it from Russ Hicks, and I remember walking through that um, that that show and like p passing Buddy Emmons in retrospect, and you know I had no idea who Buddy Emmons was. And so, right. um, but the people around us knew and were like, that's Buddy, you know? And so it's, it's funny. Again, this is like 2014, but just to give you an idea, certainly that makes me at least sound completely incompetent. But I think it's relevant here because the bottom line is you and I are in fact competent as musicians. And we have, t like th the way I view it is, I have my own musicality and I, I understand theory and harmony and all of this stuff. And if you kind of have that down, then you can approach any new instrument and learn the fundamentals of sound production, how you actually, you know, the technique, and then get your feet wet with the basic stylings of, you know, you know whatever tradition of that instrument. And all of a sudden you can leverage that instrument 
and apply your own musicality to it, right? And so right. point being here, we are competent, but we didn't grow up with like the mail order Hawaiian, you know, guitar book that Paul Franklin and Buddy Emmons did or whatever. You know, they grew up in that lineage and, and we're right. coming from right. a different, you know, sort of generalized tradition but one that allows us to unpack any specific instrument. So we have a little bit of a different perspective that I think might might be refreshing and, and, and new, at least uh, contextually, to this instrument. So, and yeah, Springfield, that's, it was, I think that same fall, 2014, that I took this guitar down and we turned it up over on the floor of uh, your basement and we're engaging the pedals and levers and like mapping out what happened with the changers and all that. And it was, you know, it was crazy. It was, you know, yeah, first we're, sort we're of- lucky we didn't destroy know. it. Yeah, <laughs> right. But, um, but, but the other thing was I kind of, and, and now I'm kind of shifting a little bit into like goals and stuff, but I always wanted to see what I could do, you know? And I, I talk about there's, a random album, but one I like that called The New Standard by Herbie Hancock. And the first track, he's playing a Don Henley song called New York Minute. And he starts by playing these really spacey, as in like good use of space, piano pads, and it builds tension. And I remember around the same time thinking, well, that's so cool. But if I knew how to play steel, I wonder if I could do it and make it sound even more cool by moving voices and so on and so forth. And and that's what I mean. Y yes, you can talk about Buddy Emmons doing jazz, playing jazz and jam, jam sessions with Jimmy Day and see what Curly Chalker did in jazz. And I'm focusing on jazz specifically, but that's just one specific thing, example. That's a different thing from like what I just talked about or if a pedal steel player in present day could hang with, uh, you know, the, the bad plus or any, like take your pick of whoever's right. on the cutting edge of, of music now. Um, and you know, there are people doing cool stuff and different things, you know, but, but I kind of want to generally speak and see what, what this instrument can do. Um, at least, at least, you know, conceptually and theoretically. So, Yes, um, I, um, yeah, and I, I was making the point before that um, it's, um, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know. Long story short, I think uh, to put a bow on like how, how we came to steel, we had these experiences in, you know, 2014-ish, and then I owned a steel and kind of looked at it and played around with it a little bit, but I didn't bother learning it until the right. pandemic. And so by the time the pandemic came, you and I, just to kind of, you know, we were isolated or whatever, um, living in different cities, you in Florida, I think at that point, I was, yes, I was just in here in Rochester. Yeah, and that was, um, that, that was, I had just recently gotten a pedal steel, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the, I guess, you know what? That's, I had recently gotten the pedal steel that I play today. It was somewhat before that that I had several others. Or one, sure. several others, I guess, that, that didn't yeah. really work out for me. Sure. Well, and that's, again, a topic for a, a different stream, right? We're totally going to go over buying a steel and what to look for and yeah. the ones we've had and all that. But, but so we were then, at that point, doing weekly video chats just, to, just for fun, just to learn this thing. And that's, I think, when both of us really got a lot more serious about it. Yeah, so... Cool. You know, so yes, we're competent as musicians. We're coming from a different perspective. We're trying to do something different and new. Um, you know, uh, so so what goals? What else is going on? And another thing I think that we that we talk about all the time is you can watch these videos on YouTube of DeWitt Scott in literally 1980 talking about how this instrument is dying. And we have to preserve this tradition and this legacy. And that sort of, um, I don't think he was wrong necessarily, but, but, but maybe he was a little bit, or maybe that's just not the case today because I, we, we talk about, it is a vibrant steel community now, and there is something of a Renaissance. And you look at, um, you know, contemporary, country musicians and they're touring with steel guitar. You look at um, 
you know, at, at, again, contemporary country musicians, and they've got steel guitar on their records. And maybe it's a new steel player, or maybe it's Paul Franklin doing something evolved from what, you know, right. what his bread and butter was 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, and but it's, it's there and it's ubiquitous dynamic. Anything, that it's, anything that's Americana, you, it, it, it seems like it's fair game now. So. Yeah, absolutely. So we kind of want to take people on that journey as we explore the contemporary world of steel and, and um, you know, and, and share, share in that journey. Um, one other thing worth mentioning is that we, we're both, I think, pretty proficient now at E9, but almost by design, I haven't touched C6. But Same here. I think that's actually going to be fun because we now can take people on the journey of how we learn or how one might apply their musicality to a new instrument. Because C6 is essentially, we're, you know, it's as much square one, more or less, as we were at the beginning of the pandemic with E9. So that could also be fun and perhaps beneficial to people who want to get their feet wet with, with you know, learning steel guitar for sure so yeah yeah um what else i think that about covers everything i had on my list yeah, um me, me as well you know goals i still i still want to play steel and maybe record or gig on it i still want to um write for it but not play it and you know force you andrew to play it um yeah. <laughs> what other goals do we have uh, you know long well, story I, short i think this yeah. is just going to be a steel guitar channel yes yeah. right. L learning it talking about it m moving it forward yeah yeah cool so we will do this again we have a number of streams mapped out but I think that covers everything that I had for today. Um, am I missing? I'm sure I'm missing stuff. But Andrew, is there anything else that you can think of that we wanted to cover in no, the I initial think we, stream? I think we, we hit everything we wanted to today. And yeah. I guess look for us for the future for our next stream. Yeah. Cool. Great. Well, fun as always. And we'll, we'll do it again. Okay. Talk to you soon.